This episode today, we're discussing one of the most sought after guitars among jump blues players. And I've got some killer special guests today that are gonna share their love and knowledge on this great guitar. So stick around, this is one video you don't wanna miss. Friends, I'm Damian Bocci and welcome to my back room here in sunny Tampa Bay, Florida. And I hope you enjoyed that playing on my 1958 Harmony H65. And basically it was just some licks played in the style of Hollywood Fats Rock This House with some of my own ideas thrown into the mix. <laughs> Now I'm so glad you're here today because we're going to be discussing the Harmony H65 and the H62, which is the two pickup version. And I think that these two models are some of the finest guitars to ever carry the Harmony name. And these two Harmony guitars are considered by many to be the quintessential jump blues guitar. Respected players in the blues community like Kid Ramos, Junior Watson, and Nick Curran have been known to play them. These beautiful guitars are full of tone and a lot of it has to do with this P13 pickup. They simply do that jump blues thing perfectly. I just love that warm, overdriven tone that they create. These guitars are the real deal. Now at its peak, the Chicago-based company was one of the largest instrument builders in the United States. And between 1945 and 1975, they roughly mass-produced 10 million guitars. Think about that. That's a lot. <laughs> now Harmony guitars were mainly marketed to beginners or budget-minded players but they also built some guitars to attract some professional players as well. And in 1954, they introduced a guitar that could compete with Gibsons, and it was the H62. Now eventually they would introduce two variations of this guitar, the H63 Espinata, which is essentially a H62, but in black. And it has a few different accompaniments, and that was released in 1955. There was also a silver tone version of that guitar as well. Now I'm really not going to focus much on that guitar today because at some point I'll probably do its own video on just the Espinata at some point. Now in 1956, the single P13 pickup H65 was introduced. And it's slightly different than the H62, but I'll get to that in a moment. But first, let's hear what a 1955 H62 sounds like. I asked my pal Vince Lee, who's an extremely accomplished blues player who's based in the southwest of England, if he would play a couple of licks for us on his H62. Check this out. Sounded amazing, right? And you know, Vince really knows his way around the guitar. His playing really brings the guitar to life. Now the Harmony H62 was in production from 1954 to 1964, and they were available in natural and sunburst finish. They were full-size jazz box guitars with a lower bout of 16 and a half inches and a three and a half inch body depth. Later on, the guitar transitioned to a more shallower depth of two and three quarters. Now originally these guitars came without truss rods, but it appears around 1956 or so they started appearing with them. Now it's worth mentioning roughly about 17 years ago there was a reissue model of the Harmony H62 that came out, but the production run only lasted a few years. I had to settle her down. Boy, she was running around doing those zoomies. All right, stay here and chill out, go to sleep. <laughs> I'm trying to film here. Now the H62 came with two Gibson produced P13 single coil pickups. 
They have adjustable pole pieces and they're a precursor to the P90. Now, when I'm surfing on the internet, I've read that there's some players out there that aren't into the P13 pickup. But everybody's got an opinion and that's cool. Everybody's different. But for me, I think they're one of the coolest vintage pickups ever produced. Now let's take another quick look at Vince Lee's H62 in action, but accompanied this time with bassist Sophie Lord. Let's watch this clip together, shall we? So good. You know, these guitars are great to play jump blues with. You can play jazz on them. And I'm actually surprised that more rockabilly players haven't gravitated towards these guitars because they really lend themselves really well to rockabilly music. And heck, if you're looking for an old school rock and roll machine, these guitars are going to do that perfectly. Now, let's take a quick look at my 1958 H65 model. And even when the guitar isn't plugged in, it still has a really nice resonance to it. Check it out, it's got a great acoustic response. Now the H65 has a two and three quarter inch depth. And the scale length is a little bit shorter than the H62 model. The scale length on this guitar is 24 and a quarter inch. The nut measures a full one and three quarter inch width. The headstock features a rosewood veneer with a cool fleur-de-lis inlay. And on the back of the headstock is a set of open back Waverly tuners. The guitar is laminated curly maple top and back. And there's some really beautiful binding on the guitar as well. And one of the coolest things on this guitar that makes it pretty unique is the really neat harp tail piece. I also really dig the radio knob style bake light -like control knobs. And also the guitar has a very nice tortoise pick guard. And the segmented F holes are pretty unique as well. Now we've got 20 frets here and it's a nice feeling round maple neck and the bound rosewood fretboard features perloid block inlays. And I did weigh this guitar and it came in at about five and a half pounds. Now here's something pretty cool I thought I'd mention. Check out this ad of the H65 from 1957. It's retailing for $145. And when I put that total into the inflation calculator to see how much it would cost in today's money, well, I was pretty surprised. It's about $1,600 this guitar would cost now. That's a lot of money. Now, before I wrap up this video, I'd like to introduce one last special guest. And he's a person that's pretty key in documenting the legacy, the history, and the impact Harmony guitars have made over the years. His name is Ron Rothman, and he is the author of this very fine book, Harmony, the People's Guitar, which I highly recommend if you don't have it. So now, without further ado, here's Ron. Hey everybody, it's Ron Rothman, author of Harmony the People's Guitar. First, I want to thank Damien for including me in this video and appreciate what he's doing to educate people about the Harmony brand. When you think about Harmony guitars, everybody's first Stella comes to mind, but they did have what they called a professional line of guitars. The Spanish electric guitars of the 1950s gave way to what become some of the most desirable Harmony guitars sought after today. What made them different from other guitars from this period was not the detail for quality. Harmony would be a little cruder in the way they were made, but they would include components that would make them stand out. These early arch tops have a wonderful, distinct sound. Like all Harmony guitars, they can be fun to play and make music with. And it is all about the music. Keep picking them Harmony guitars. Thank you, Ron, for those words. Very much appreciated, my friend. And by the way, on the back of Ron's book here, Harmony the People's Guitar. Vince Lee is on the back. Pretty cool. Now, as I wrap up this video, I just wanted to mention that I have three guitars that I really adore in my collection. One of them is a 1997 Gretsch White Falcon. The other is a 1957 Gibson ES-125 and this guitar, the 1958 H65. 
I am so happy to have this guitar in my possession and to be the current caretaker of it. I love it. I just love having my hands on it. I, I just love looking at it and I love how it sounds. This guitar has mojo. And I think that's why the H65, the H62, and the H63 Espinata are so sought after. I mean, these guitars, especially the H62, are cult classics. And the Espinata, yeah, they're cult classics. And rightly so, because they're beautiful instruments. Now I made this video today out of love for this instrument and because I kind of love all things old and sort of live in the past. <laughs> and it's a video that I wanted to do simply out of pure enjoyment. Now I'm in no way a harmony expert. I'm just a guy that enjoys harmony guitars and loves playing them. And for this video, I tried to dig up anything I can find on these instruments, whether it's on a printed page or articles online or anything I can find through forums on the internet. If I've missed anything or if I got something wrong or if you'd like to share your stories on the H62, H65 or H63 Espinata, please share those in the comments below. Well, friends, that's all the time that we have for this video today. I want to thank you so much for spending some time with me. Now, I'd like to give a big thank you to both of my special guests. Thank you, Ron Rothman, the author of Harmony, The People's Guitar. It's a great book. you got to check it out. Pick it up if you don't have it already. I've put a link in the video description of where you can pick one up if you'd like to own a personal copy for yourself. And also, thank you so much to Vince Lee for playing those awesome licks on his H62 guitar. Sounded great, my friend. And also in the video description, there's a link to Vince's Facebook page where he posts videos daily and also keeps you up to date on his latest performances. And friends, if you enjoyed this video today on the Harmony H62 and H65, please give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps me out. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you're digging those old school guitar licks that you heard in this video today, I just want to let you know that I have two great full-length courses on rockabilly guitar and on jump blues guitar. Both courses are available at my website at damianbachi.com. Both courses come with PDF file guitar tabs and backing tracks. And they're both available as a DVD or as a download. These courses, friends, will not disappoint. And now, friends, I'd like to leave you with some inspiring words. Holding anger and resentment deep inside yourself is an unhealthy choice. And as that really cool quote goes, we should all try to do better and not bitter. You just got to free yourself from those shackles. You don't need to live a life being angry and hold grudges. And sure, you can easily allow those feelings to get you down. But choose to be the better person and don't let those feelings bring you down. You're too good for that. Life with bitterness sucks. In the past, long ago, I've lived like that. And others who've lived like that can attest to this. That living without bitterness is so much better. But that choice, friends, is up to you. And with that, friends, I'm going to say goodbye to you. Much love to you all. Stay safe. And I'll see you soon in another guitar video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.